Hello. Today we will continue with the CompuPlast Virtual Extrusion Laboratory Material Properties Module, and we will see how to prepare a material data file based on measured viscosity versus shear rate data. The following Excel spreadsheet shows a graph of a LDPE NA217 material showing the apparent viscosity versus the apparent shear rate at three different temperatures, 430, 450, and 470 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the type of data that we need to prepare a material file. Now, while we can extract the data from the graph, it's always better to have the actual data points as shown here in this table. And the important points are here at the end, shear rate, viscosity, and the temperature that was used. So this is the data at 430 degrees, this is the data at 450 degrees, and this is the data at 470 degrees. Now it is easier if we take all the data and put it into three columns. Here it is at 430, and the data from 450, and the data at 470. Doesn't matter if the temperatures are increasing or decreasing. Um, as long as we have shear rate first, viscosity second, and temperature third. Once we have the data in this format, it is relatively easy to create a material file, as I will show now. Then we go to the materials module, and we make sure we're on the measured data tab, in this case, and we click new. And this panel pops up uh, asking us, um, where was the, how was the material obtained? Was it supplied by the manufacturer? Did you find it in literature? Or did you have it measured yourself? In this case, we had it measured, so measured by the user. The viscosity was indeed in Pascal seconds, but the temperature was in degrees Fahrenheit. So once we've defined the, uh, these parameters, we click OK, and we can now go to our main panel and say that this is an NA, 217 material, which is in the LDPE group, and the manufacturer was Equistar. Once we've filled in the information in the basic info panel, we move to the shear points. And the shear points, it has the one default data point uh, when the file was uh, created. That's shown right here. We want to replace this data point with the data that's in our Excel file. So we go to our Excel file once again, and we highlight the three columns. And once we've highlighted, we right click and we copy them into the clipboard. We put this away for now. And here we go to Notepad, and it shows the one data point in the Notepad. We simply highlight the one data point, then right click and paste our data over top of that. So here we have now the data from our measurements. We simply save and exit. And our data now has shown up in the graph and in the column here at the three temperatures that we had measured. Now this data, as you saw, was apparent viscosity data. So it needs to be corrected for Rabinowitz correction. If it was corrected data, then we simply click true. But since it was apparent data, we click on Apparent, and we move on to the Model tab. Now, the Model tab, we select which viscosity model we want to use for our data. Um, in the past, Power Law model was the most uh, popular, and a log polynomial model will, will fit quite nicely, but it has no theoretical basis. What we normally recommend is one of these three models, Caro, Cross, Leonov, and generally, the Corot model is the most uh, general to use. Um, so we'll pick that. And for temperature, we have WLF or exponential. Exponential uh, works fine. And the reference temperature, we want the one of the center reference temperatures in our data is preferred. So if we can't remember that that was 450, we simply click Estimate, and it'll determine the value from the, um, from the data provided. 
The next tab is sensitivity, and it's shown here that it's not applicable. And that reason is that we have data at three different temperatures, and so we don't need to enter this parameter. The software will calculate what this value is based on the data. The last tab that we have here is elongational points. We do not have any elongational points, but if we did, we simply click allow elongational viscosity and we would enter this data in a similar fashion to what we entered the shear viscosity data. But since we don't have it, we'll turn that off. Once we've entered all our data, we click Save and Fit. And here you can see the curve that was fit to the data. And it shows just the 450, the reference point. We can add the 430 and the 470 there to see what the fit looks like. And uh, we can see that qualitatively, the fit is pretty good. Uh, quantitatively, the error is about 1.9%. And generally, anything less than 0.6-8% is acceptable um, and means that the data was pretty good. If it gets any more than that, there's generally something wrong with the, with the data. It wasn't uh, measured properly. We can look at a summary. Again, the summary has the uh, main information of the fitting, the model that was used, the parameters that were determined. And of course, it shows here's the uh, temperature um, dependence parameter. It was not applicable. It calculated the shift factor. And now we have the true viscosity and um, uh, fitted viscosity. And we can compare how close those are. And of course, we have our, our error there. We can print or save this file um, to use it for reference. Once we're happy with the fit, we simply click Save in MDB and Close. The, this parameter, uh, this uh, panel will come up asking for the name. We might want to put Caro there. So remember that the fitting was a Caro model. And it shows the path where the data will be copied to, or the material file. We click OK. And this panel comes up asking, asking us, because this is one of the uh, uh, this LDP group, we have some default properties for, for thermodynamic data. Uh, it asks us, do you want us to include this in the file? In other words, the uh, melt density, heat capacity, thermal conductivity, and the corresponding solid density and thermal properties. And we simply just check these boxes, and it'll include those parameters. And we click OK. We switch over to our Materials tab now and go down to the LDPE group, and we see that there's a new material, NA217 Caro. And when we open that material, we can see that it's got the Caro model parameters um, for that particular material. And we have the uh, temperature shift parameters here, and the thermal properties, density, heat capacity, thermal conductivity which are required in order to perform a simulation. Now, this file is put ready and can be used by any of the other virtual extrusion laboratory modules. Thank you.